Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. Today is February 5th, and today's hidden figure is Ming Smith, who is an American photographer and the first Black American female photographer whose work was acquired by the Museum of Modern Art, or the MoMA, in New York City. She is known for her informal, in-action portraits of everyday citizens and Black cultural figures, from Alvin Ailey to Nina Simone and a wide range of jazz musicians. Smith was born in Detroit, Michigan, and raised in Columbus, Ohio. On her first day of school in kindergarten, she borrowed her mother's camera and took pictures of her classmates. Her father was a pharmacist by trade and a photographer filmmaker by hobby, with Smith stating that her gravitating towards photography was a natural thing to do. She initially studied medicine and microbiology at Howard University in Washington, D.C., of course, because her grandfather wanted her to be a doctor, and she initially felt that being a doctor was a way of trying to help people. However, in an interview, she stated her mind changed. I read something about artists and they were talking about the system and how your work could help humanity and your work could be outside of the system instead focusing and turning ideas into something that would be healing. Then she decided to become an artist. After graduating from Howard in 1973, she moved to New York City where she found work modeling while learning photography. She stated her amazement at the pay involved with her artistic endeavors. She made $100 an hour as an artist model while her father made $100 a week working 12 hour shifts as a pharmacist in Ohio. Also in 1973, Smith was featured in the first volume of the Black Photographer's Annual, a publication closely affiliated with the Black arts movement of the 1960s and early 1970s. In 1973, she also had her first exhibition at San Andre, a famous beauty parlor. While at San Andre, she met Grace Jones, whom she photographed in a now famous picture of Jones wearing a black and white tutu. In another portrait of Jones, Smith photographed her in a wash of glitter that she enhanced with dabs of pink paint. I had known her as a singer. She was an aspiring model like me, and we became friends, Smith said. We were trying to make money, trying to survive. Looking back, we were trying to reinvent ourselves, or maybe invent ourselves. Smith and Jones would talk about surviving as Black artists, with Ming stating, I came out of Jim Crow, and so just coming to New York and trying to be a model or anything was new. Smith married jazz saxophonist David Murray and traveled with him on the road, giving her access to the jazz performers that she began to photograph in informal behind-the-scenes shots. Being a black woman photographer was like being nobody, Smith said. It was just my camera and me. I worked to capture black culture, the richness, the love. That was my incentive. It wasn't like I was going to make money from it or fame. There were no shows. This was due to the fact that there were very few places for black Americans to exhibit their work. There was the Studio Museum in Harlem, which still exists as a space to mentor, mentor, excuse me, nurture and exhibit black artists, and just above Midtown, a gallery which was run by Linda Good Bryant between 1974 and 1986. In her early days of modeling and learning photography, Smith lived in Greenwich Village in Harlem, traveling all over the city for go sees and oftentimes making acquaintances with other well-known artists and entertainers of the time. She frequently ate at a cheap diner near Washington Square Park, where she became friends with Austrian-American photographer Lisette Model, who was the mentor of another female photographer, Diane Arbus. Model took Smith under her wing as well, but Arbus, a white woman, became much more famous. In 1975, Ming Smith met photographers Anthony Barbosa and Lou Draper, who would also mentor her and invite her to, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Kamowinge? 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 Uh, K-A-M-O-I-N-G-E, a Harlem-based Black photographers group created to organize and support the creative political activity of Black photographers. This group also included the likes of Gordon Parks, who, which, who was a huge fan of Ming Smith's work. Kamowinge encouraged the establishment of autonomous Black-owned publications in order to support and create opportunities for Black artists, as well as stressing the importance of Black American photographers capturing Black subjects. They met weekly, exhibited, and published together 
together and pushed each other to expand the boundaries of photography as an art form during a critical era of Black self-determination in the 1960s and 70s. The group organized several shows in their own gallery space in addition to exhibitions at the Studio Museum in Harlem and the International Center for Photography. Smith was its first female member and she began exhibiting with the group as well as workshopping and receiving critical feedback from its members. The collective, which still exists today, served as a place of friendship, affirmation, and career development for its members, giving lectures and workshops and publishing portfolios for distribution to museums. Smith dropped off one such portfolio during an open call for art at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, where the receptionist initially mistook her for a messenger. When she returned to pick the portfolio back up, she was instead taken into the curator's office to negotiate a price for her work. Initially declining because the sum wouldn't pay her bills, she was asked to reconsider for a higher price and accepted the offer. This made her the first Black woman photographer to be included in the collections at the MoMA in New York. Smith's work is influenced by surrealism and has been described as an expression of experience. She often utilizes such techniques as shooting out of focus, mixing in documentary style camera work, and even altering, hand tinting, or painting over prints. She was also an accomplished portrait photographer who photographed many important black cultural figures during her career, including Alvin Ailey, Nina Simone, Sun Ra, and James Baldwin. Her work has been described as an artistic and adventurous sensibility that casts uncommon light on artists and ordinary persons alike. The magic of photography, Smith stated, is seeing and capturing the moment. In the early 1990s, she created a series around Black American Pulitzer Prize winning playwright August Wilson, retracing his steps in the Hill District of Pittsburgh where many of his plays were set and photographing ordinary people and places that could have featured in his plays. The juxtaposition between the ordinary and the extraordinary was a running theme in her work as she showcased both celebrities and ordinary people in the street with the same care and affection. She was hugely influenced by Wilson's sensibilities. Wilson made marginal people monumental, Smith said. Just from going to his plays, I felt so strongly about those characters. When I grew up in Ohio, these were the characters I knew. And you guys have heard me talk like similarly about August Wilson. Like he just really tapped into he just really tapped into something like really like primal, I would even say, about our culture. It just is it's very appealing. Um, Smith has also made several pieces about her childhood in Ohio and her desire to move beyond the racism of her upbringing. For instance, she had a high school counselor who told her that college would be unnecessary, given her likely future work as a domestic. She says that her art is to forget all of that. Despite her prolific work, Smith remained under the radar of mainstream art appreciation for decades and barely showed in museums. A retrospective brought new light to her work in 2010, followed by several well-received shows in the late 2010s and a spot in the critically acclaimed Soul of a Nation, Art in the Age of Black Power show at the Brooklyn Museum and at the Broad Museum in 2019. The collection traveled around the world pre-COVID and today MoMA owns seven of her black and white works. In addition to the MoMA, Smith's work is in museum collections, including the National Gallery of Art, the Whitney Museum of American Art, the Brooklyn Museum of Art, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, the Detroit Institute of Arts, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, the African American History and Culture Museum in Washington, D.C., and the Schomburg Center for Research and Culture in her beloved Harlem. Smith has also collaborated with noted filmmaker, I always want to say Arthur Jaffa, but it might be Jaffa. You guys can let me know. In 2001, after a dozen years living in Los Angeles, Smith returned to New York, the city that made her a photographer, where she currently lives. So I know I've actually included quite a few of Ming Smith's quotes already in this video. Um, I read a lot of her interviews uh, while doing my preparation for this one, and of course there will be tons of links and information in the description box. Uh, but I just wanted to read you guys um, a, a little bit more from a profile that was done on her that I thought was really fantastic. Um, so they asked her, there's such a sense of intimacy and connectivity about your images. How do you capture that? What do you look for in your subject matter? And she answered, 
Well, there are stereotypes of the black community, but there is so much love in the community from people who are making and doing the best spiritually or going to church. There was just this stereotype of black people, you know, and I never saw those types of images with the love and the empathy and the humanity with the people that were around me in my community. And they asked her, how do you get inspired? And she said, I follow mainly instincts and my heart about things. I hope to say these things in my work. That is the intention. Would you say your photography is driven by intuition? Definitely. Intuition, which is also very spiritual. It's like there is a spirit that speaks within me, and I go with that. I trust that more than I trust my brain. What do you hope viewers take away from your works? I think just the personal struggles, the empathy or the humanity or the altruism or just being supportive. Maybe the humanity and that being exposed to the people I have photographed, they will know what to do. It was like when I heard my first August Wilson play or the drum and I went and I took my first dance class and the teacher told me that he was a Katherine Dunham dancer. People will get what they want from my photography, hopefully an experience that will inspire them in some kind of way. And that is Ming Smith, a hidden figure. I also want to add just a little addendum that she uh, has a son uh, with her, her husband, David Hammond, uh, and her son's name is Mingus, and he's also a musician. I'm going to assume he's named after her. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, happy Friday. Hopefully everyone had a good week, a first week of February, a first Black History Month week and i will see you guys with another hidden figure tomorrow super thought as always see you guys peace